pregame.com. Wednesday night, Big East action. We've got Marquette traveling to Cincinnati. We're doing this video on Monday, so we don't have the lines out for Wednesday yet. I'm going to project this line, and Stephen, this is a tough one to project the line on because when we get to these last couple games, you've got last home game situations to factor into the line, senior night and stuff. You've got the bubble team stuff, and we're going to talk about the bubble here in a second, and Cincinnati really shouldn't be a bubble team, but I'm going to explain some things. Marquette, I'm projecting them to be a one-and-a-half point favorite here. Um, Cincinnati's a 20-win team, plays in the Big East. That's an automatic. They should be in the, you know, in the, uh, the big dance. However, for a 20-win team, Cincinnati has looked really good in some games this year. Then they've had some ugly losses. You know, one of those ugly losses, Sunday, at South Florida. You lose a game at South Florida where you only score 45 points, that's, you know, that's not a good situation to, uh, you know, head into the March Madness with and trying to make your resume look good with the uh, selection committee. Is the Big East strong enough to get seven or eight teams in this year? Especially this year, Marco, because uh, every year we have bubble teams, and this year I think we have a lot of more, compared to previous years, weaker bubble teams. And you have 20 wins, you're in the Big East. In my opinion, that's an automatic. And uh, sure, Cincinnati did not look good offensively against South Florida. Prior to that, though, they'd won three in a row. And let's face it, South Florida does play good defense. This is a good defensive team. So maybe some credit to South Florida. But, yeah, this will be a test for Cincinnati. They got blown out the first time they played Marquette, really had trouble in transition, committed, I think, 14 turnovers. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, revenge, which is another factor. So Cincinnati gets blown out here, well... You know, maybe they're one of those bad bubble teams then. And well, they're, sit they're sitting seventh in the Big East right now. And that's, a, that's why that loss dropped them, you know, down. And with the other teams, you know, continuing to win, uh, mm -hmm. dropped them in the standings. And, South, you know, we talked about South Florida. South Florida is one of those teams that's above them in the standings, but they only have, 18, you know, 18 wins, but they're above them in the standings. So which takes precedence, you know, to the, the lower, you know, the lower teams in the conference. It's kind of hard to bypass a team that just beat you and is above you in the standing. So I think Cincinnati, uh, the revenge factor, mm. playing last home game and you're playing it on TV. Um, I think it's going to, you know, the crowd's going to be, you know, pumped up in Cincinnati. And nobody wants to head into the, you know, conference tournament, you know, with you know losing two or three in a row which could possibly happen if Cincinnati doesn't get this game especially coming off a very poor offensive performance and as you said was it a poor offensive performance by Cincinnati or was it just a stellar defensive performance by South Florida because even though Cincinnati only scored 45 points they only gave up 46 so you know they played great defense and I think that's the key to this game for Cincinnati is they got to play good defense because when they played the first time, Marquette blew the doors off them and you know and, and scored a lot of points. Ninety five points. Yeah, they got they got to they got to play a little better defense the second time around here, and I think it's a situation where they can do it. Marquette does have something to play for. Um, they're trying to lock down the number two seed in the Big East, which you know they get you by it gets you by in the first round. And it also lets you avoid a little team named Syracuse until the championship game. Uh, Syracuse, you know, clearly uh, the class of the Big East, like we talked about in the previous video we did with, you know, Kentucky being head and shoulders above everybody else in the conference. Um, Syracuse, not as much head and shoulders above the Big East because I think top to bottom the Big East has a little more depth than the SEC this year. I think. The SEC is very top-heavy, and then from the middle to the bottom is pretty mediocre in the SEC this year. Well, not only do you, uh, if you get that bye, do you avoid a game in that Big East tournament, but I think of all the postseason tournaments, the Big East physically is oh. the roughest. And that could hurt you down the road when you've got to play day after day. That could have some lasting repercussions on that. So it's just, 
not only obviously improves your chances of winning the tournament, but just it's such a physical break for you. Yeah, the Big East, and we know the Big East is near and dear to my heart, you know, uh, well, at least for one more <laughs> for this season because uh, Pitt will be uh, moving on to the ACC. That's just going to be weird for me becoming a <laughs> an no, ACC fan. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not happy with all of these conference no, right, changes and re either. realignment. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to change a lot of things for him. I mean, because... You know, I mean, that's a whole other discussion, but rivalries and... No, you know, it's not good from a fan standpoint, and it's certainly not good from a handicapping standpoint. And uh, I mean, look, we just had this great Kansas-Missouri game. Yeah. Oh, and now these guys aren't going to play anymore? Yeah. It's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a thriller on Saturday for sure. Looking at this game here, Cincinnati, they're a team, they play well at home. They're 14-4 and four straight up. Ironically, 14 and 4 straight up, they only convert to 3 and 9 against the spread. Now, for this game, the spread's not going to be a factor. You pick the winner in this game, I think you're going to pick the point spread winner, unless we come down to a one point well, game, which. I don't know, Marco. <laughs> I, I did not have this game for pregame because I didn't get the number I wanted, but I thought West Virginia would be the, the side against Marquette this past yeah. Friday. I thought West Virginia would come a dog. These odds makers are so sharp. It was either pick or you had to lay points with West Virginia. So yeah. this very well could come yeah. down to one point. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for bringing that up because I did have West Virginia <laughs> last Friday night and I did lay the one point. Yeah, and I did watch them choke away a double digit lead to uh, lose a game, yeah. you know, to, for another game to be decided on the last possession. Yeah. And I just coming in today, I mean, for a side note, you know, not to get off track on this game, but right now the lines makers are doing one hell of a job with, with yep. the line. The lines are super tight. Yep. I told you I had three games on Saturday. All three of my games came down to a possession. Yep. You know, and I mean, it, it's across the board. You look at every game and see how many games are falling within a bucket of the number. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you are, whether you win a game or yep. lose a game. When a game is decided yep. by a bucket or less, you didn't have the winning mm -hmm. side or the losing side. Yeah. You it, it came down to the you know who yeah. made a foul shot at the yeah. end or who who hit a three yeah. when they were down, and it could go either way. And the yeah, lines are just tight. You really have to, to credit the odds maker and give them props. And it's not just the major conferences like the Big East. A few days ago, I had a strong play in a Big Sky game. I liked Northern Arizona getting uh, twenty points. Uh, against Montana. Montana had a look ahead, uh, and I just thought it was a good spot for Northern Arizona. I said, well, the odds makers, this isn't a sharp line. They shouldn't be laying 20. So I took the dog. Well, they won. You know, they covered. They lost by 19. <laughs> you know, it just... Uh, Makes you scratch your head sometimes. Yeah, you got to really give them props. I, and I do. And I mean... I'm from the, the old mm. school analogy. I do give them props and I do respect them where a lot of the younger guns, you know, the, the, everybody thinks they're smarter than the lines makers. Well, the guys that are at the, at the books, they're there for a reason making these lines. And there's a reason Vegas is, is, is cashing tickets. Yeah. They're winning. You know, they don't build those neon uh, big ma magnificent mm. casinos on the strip by having dummies running the places. Well, so. I, I always said that they uh, were able to fund all those things through uh, Cubs future book tickets. <laughs> well, that's, that's true, the, the lovable <laughs> Cubs. But we'll be getting to baseball uh, in a couple weeks. Back to this game. Um, Cincinnati definitely, I think, will be in the big dance. But I think a signature win on TV against Marquette will absolutely you know, solidify their, their ticket. Um, and I think they get it. It's a huge revenge game. Marquette, off of that West Virginia game, you got to be spent. You know, when you come to back from double digits like that, it's an intense effort. you you got to play defense. It's, it's a grueling game. Uh, I think it's going to take a little of the steam out of Marquette. And, uh, you know, Marquette's got a big revenge game of their own up next. They play Georgetown on the weekend in a revenge game. And... That's their senior night. So I think scheduling-wise, coming off that 45-point performance on Sunday, revenge playing at home, last home game, the ESPN cameras, I think it just adds up to a great spot for Cincinnati to pull a mild upset. And again, I say a mild upset because we could be sitting here talking and Wednesday they end up making Cincinnati a one-point favorite. I think they win the game by four. I'm going to take Cincinnati. What do you What do you think? Well, Marco, I uh, 
Uh, I wish you luck. I, I can't get involved in this. Mm -hmm. I, um, you make good points with, with Cincinnati, compelling points. Can't argue those points. However, I'm not going to step in against Marquette. I mean, this is a team. They show great character uh, with the suspensions in the first half of key players, and then they come back from that deficit to, to win on the road. Very tough road venue at, at West Virginia. I don't think they'd ever won in Morgantown. Mm -hmm. I think that was the first time they ever won there. And they... I don't like to step in in front of a train like that. But. It, it is definitely a train, but Stephen, if there's ever mm. a time to do it, don't you think that because of the suspensions in the first half and then rallying and winning, that to pull off a win like that was so such a satisfying win that you got to come up a little bit, you, you know, relaxed or you know, lackadaisical in your next performance off of a win like that? Well. Yes and no, um, but from a physical standpoint, those suspensions, those guys played less minutes well, yeah. because of that. And this was not a Saturday night game. This was a Friday night mm -hmm. game, so that's an extra day of getting back home. And uh, uh, But, yeah, I can't argue your, your points. It's situationally it sets up for Cincinnati. It's almost to me like you know we've talked about the injured player theory a lot in mm -hmm. different sports that when you – you know, this wasn't a full game, it was a half game, but, you know, they, they did have a negative for a half of the game, and then they were managed to overcome it, and now they're going to be playing with full strength in this game. Uh, you know, it's like the injured player coming back. I normally go against that team. So I'm going to stick with Cincinnati here. I got them winning by four. Steven's on the fence, but we're going to come back and do another video. Steven's getting off the fence in the next one. He's got to play in the NBA, and it's a pretty big game in the NBA. Uh, Chicago, San Antonio, we're going to see, uh, find out uh, if the San Antonio Spurs are for real or not. They've been playing like it. We'll be right back with that one and continue to carry on the conversation. Pregamevideos.com. We'll have all of our show notes, and you can ask us anything you want about the games on game day. If there's any line adjustments, you can ask it. We'll be there to answer.